Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about taking Renko from Lady Musgrave Island up to Great Keppel Island and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. We'll start by going back to a few weeks ago when we left Lady Musgrave Island. Here we are at Lady Musgrave Island, right here on the uh, eastern edge. And after this, we're heading into Gladstone to get more water, etc. Having had a bit of a camera failure while showing where we're going, I will now show you where we're going again, even though we are now in the future. And held down so the wind doesn't blow it away. This is uh, kind of a bullet casing, or shell casing, I don't know, whatever you call them, um, that I found on Lady Musgrave Island. Uh, it's MF 20 millimeter and it's got 50 on it. I think 50, maybe 1950. Uh, and I believe these are from a Swiss gun that we used on some of the mine sweepers and submarines, etc., as the deck gun. I'll talk more about that in a separate video, but it's been an interesting little uh, research project to figure out what's going on here. So MF is the munitions factory in Footscray in Victoria, which is now closed. Although we didn't go uh, metric until 60 something. These were for a Swiss gun and the Swiss went metric in like 1877 or something. So that's why this is in millimeters, even though it's relatively old. Anyway, that was just something else from metal detecting around Lady Musgrave. Now, we need to get from here to Gladstone. Have to carefully navigate through this curry stain, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So I'll draw this in and then I'll show you how we figured out the bearing. Even though obviously you do all this stuff on SatNav these days, I think it's good just to keep doing it, to keep reminding yourself, you know, how to do paper chart work and also to teach people kicking and screaming because they rarely want to learn about it. But anyway, here we go. Coming from over here at Lady Musgrave Island, we join the channel here just north of these rocks. So we came around here and then joined the channel. You can stay out of the channel, it's a shipping channel. So it's best not to be right in the channel, but we crossed it here. If you're over 10 meters, you need to call the Harbour Control on Channel 13. We sort of just monitored Channel 13, stayed just out of the channel. You may have also noticed our classy new uh, awning for shade. Gone for the uh, $9 tarp rather than the cheap sort of $4 one. That way we get reinforced corners. No expense spared. It's got that nice crackle, so it makes a deafening noise in about three knots of wind. But just have these poles, camping tent poles, into rod holders on both sides. They extend out, then just attached to the, you know, the uh, solar awning. Plan down the track, obviously, is to find something better quality and the exact right size. We may have to get it sewn up, but it's good for a bit of extra temporary shade on the back deck here. To figure out the true bearing of this course, we can use our Portland Triangle here or our Parallel Ruler. I am going to use both to show you. You can see this point just here as we enter the curry stain is right on the intersection between our course line and one of the vertical longitude lines. Then if we come down here, we can see what the angle is away from straight. So if this angle was here, we'd know we're heading due west. But you can see here, this longitude line is pretty much in line with this mark. This is 270, this is 260, so 265. So what's that? 267.5. This means that we're two and a half degrees south of due west. The other way to get this angle is to use your parallel ruler like this. Put the parallel ruler on the line. Hold this half steady and then you move this half up until it goes through the center of the compass row. So this bottom half's on our course we've drawn with a pencil. Top half is through our compass row center. The idea with a parallel ruler, unsurprisingly, is these two lines are parallel, and then you can simply read it off here. You can see here it's saying 266, so it's saying four degrees south of west. And I must admit, this was a little bit past the, you know, the marking for the two and a half, so definitely concur with each other. 
if the place you are trying to measure is further away from a compass rose, there's usually a couple on a chart so that you don't have to go too far depending where you are. But if you did need to come from further away, some parallel rulers are just roller rulers. So they roll on these rollers that keep them in a straight line and not turning <laughs> like that just did. I find them a little bit hit and miss. Which is why I like these. You just hold it still, open it up, and you can bring the other side back, hold it quite firmly, and then walk it down to your compass rose. Because we had a long way to go to get to Gladstone, we left reasonably early. I didn't want to leave at the crack of dawn though, because you do need the sun to be up a little bit to see the bommies and the shallow sections of reef. It makes it much easier to navigate your way out with the sun a little bit higher. The first sign that you're getting close to Gladstone is all the ships. It's a very busy industrial harbour with the gas ships and the coal ships. After we got into the channel, we came all the way up here to what I believe was called Auckland Creek. I'm not sure if it's named here, but this is where Gladstone Marina was here. We're here in Gladstone Marina at the moment, really nice place. Obviously been uh, done up recently, you know, things like the bathrooms and whatever are amazing, like a, you know, hotel. They've even got uh, classical music playing in the bathrooms. Very nice. Going up to the office at the moment to see Graham works here. He's gonna give us some advice on trying to go up through the Narrows rather than going out past Facing Island again. So it'd be interesting to see what he says. I had a really good chat with Graham about crossing the Narrows. Gave me lots of great information. Very friendly and helpful guy. So thank you, Graham. This guide was actually in a bag they gave us when we went to the marina. I should have read this first, shouldn't I? Being lazy going to see him. But what Graham showed me is there is information in crossing the narrows in here. Whole double page dedicated to the narrows. The important thing is to cross you need a tide that is 1.5 metres plus the draft of your boat. In our case we've got about a 1.2 metre draft so we need a 2.7 metre tide in order to cross the narrows. So that's the formula you follow. The Narrows, as well as being really protected, I think it said somewhere here is eight nautical miles short than going back offshore around the outside, so it is a good option. The Narrows is the channel between Curtis Island and the mainland here. If you come up, it's reasonably deep till you get to this centre section where at low tide it's completely exposed. There's even a cattle crossing up here, which I'll show you as we go. We headed up and then dropped anchor here, waiting for the tide to be just right to make this crossing. It's about an hour before high tide now, which is uh, sort of the ideal time to start making the crossing through the narrows. So we're gonna lift the anchor up and get going.
Once we're through the Narrows, we anchored in Badgers Creek here overnight. We're about to head north now to Pacific Creek, which is closer to being back out in the ocean outside of uh, the Narrows. The next trip was quite short. We came out of Badgers Creek and simply went up here towards Pacific Creek. All right, let's fire it up and head up there. There are a few old houses at the mouth of Pacific Creek from when the area was a pilot station. It's also relatively shallow going into Pacific Creek. It's a bit of a bar at the entrance. It's deep once you're in, but definitely shallow entering. To that end, there's some leads you can see here on the shore that sort of guide you in. Once you're past the leads, you turn a bit to port to go up the main creek, but uh, just be aware of some rocks on the point on your port side. After that, we came out and headed down the South Channel to go up the Fitzroy River, purely so I could find some reception and upload last week's video. We found a nice creek to anchor in opposite the boat ramp. It's a really beautiful spot. Had a storm come through that night too. In the morning we came out back down through the South Channel. The Fitzroy River is very wide but it's also very shallow. This entrance isn't that straightforward. We followed the recommended course on the Raymarine GPS and it got us there safely but it's certainly not something I would like to wing. Once we came out we were heading pretty much straight north up to Great Keppel Island where we are now. When we got to Great Keppel Island, we anchored off Monkey Beach. Seemed like a reasonably nice protected spot given the winds that were forecast. In the morning, the first job was to try and get my scuba cylinders refilled after using them all up at Lady Musgrave Island. These uh, cylinders are out of date. Another good reason to go to a uh, compressor. Using a good little look on the bottom. What can you see down there, buddy? Hello. <laughs> She's having a good look at something and then having a breathe. Two of the three are out of uh, hydro date, so I'm just going to take that one up. Better than nothing. Here we are, Keppel Dive. Let's see what they can do for us. With the cylinder dropped off to be filled, we decide to head out for a snorkel. And to be honest, it's so shallow around the reef that snorkeling is really the best way to go. Thank you. 
Now it's time for an update on the new alternator and the new DC-DC charger. Exciting stuff. Here used to be a VSR that connected the starting bank with the house bank. Here I've installed a new terminal post with three wires that came off the positive side of that VSR. They are now the main lead going to the house master switch, the lead going to the Red Arc DC-DC charger. So once again, another DC-DC charger. In this case, it's the 24 to 12 to charge the 12 volt house bank. This has actually been a little bit of the unsung hero of this project. It's just worked from day one and never missed a beat. It keeps my 12 volt bank charged from the 24 volt house bank. I can put a solar cell into this directly and have a solar cell that purely charges the 12 volt bank as well. This is a solar controller as well. I just haven't really had a need to do that yet. So VSR is gone and the Orion is here. Now this simply has two in, two out. Yes, it's a little bit rough and ready still, but we're getting there. This allows us to take the charge from the alternator and charge a lithium bank without frying the alternator. When a lithium battery is quite flat, it can absorb a huge amount of charge. So it appears to the alternator like a short circuit almost. So you can burn out an alternator by drawing too much current from it. By putting the Orion between the house bank and the starting bank, the alternator charges the starting bank and then this controller make sure that the lithium's charged in both a way that's good for the lithium and doesn't burn out the alternator. So really handy to have. You can jump onto the app for this charge controller using Bluetooth and you can tell it at what voltage you want to start charging lithium, at what voltage you want it to stop, etc. Uh, because I don't have a smart alternator, this is how it detects whether the engine's running and it should be charging the battery. Sun going down, other rains. Well, thanks for watching. Being able to get the scuba cylinders filled here was great, but obviously having two of them out of date, not quite sure how that happened, because I think I had them filled recently and checked, so maybe I missed something on the stamps there. But at the end of the day, it's not ideal. We talked before about running out of water on Renko, but I think the next thing you run out of is compressed air. To that end, I've started looking into some sort of electric hooker system for diving off the boat, so hopefully we'll be seeing that in a future video not too far away. All right, we'll take care. I'll catch you then. See ya.